Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Coming up this week, a probe can come home, DNA is found in a cave, and brains. <music> Starting off the news this week, the OSIRIS-REx asteroid probe, sent to the asteroid called Bennu, has now been confirmed by NASA to be able to come home after an earlier scare where it was unable to close the door of a container containing samples of asteroid rock that will be brought back to Earth. After the anxiety of waiting to see whether or not OSIRIS-REx would even pick up any rock, NASA scientists found that it had actually picked up too much, meaning the door to the container was unable to close and samples were falling out. Luckily, this problem has since been solved, and OSIRIS-REx is on its way back to Earth where it will deliver samples of Bennu the asteroid in September 2023. In other news, we've got a very intriguing paper in which mitochondrial DNA belonging to Denisovans has been identified from sediments in the Baisha Karst cave on the Tibetan Plateau. A mandible from the mid Pleistocene that's referred to Denisovans has already been uncovered from this cave, the first evidence of these humans outside Siberia to be found. But now, researchers have examined sediments deposited in the cave about 100,000, 60,000 and 45,000 years ago, finding that Denisovan DNA is present at all of these times. The long-term occupation of the cave seems to confirm that the Denisovans were adapted to living at high altitudes, and through interbreeding could have passed some of these adaptations onto anatomically modern humans living on the Tibetan Plateau as well. And now over to Ben, who has a cat. Thanks, Doug. Also in this week's news is an interesting study that has analysed the dental microware texture of various different pterosaur genera to try and work out what some of the earliest members of this group were feeding on and how their diets evolved over time. It was found that there was a wide diversity in diet, with taxa such as Dimorphodon feeding on vertebrates while others fed on hard invertebrates. There was even evidence of niche partitioning between pterosaurs that lived alongside each other, such as Rampharynchus being a piscivore while Pterodactylus was a generalist invertebrate consumer. The researchers suggest that the ancestral pterosaur diet was mostly made up of feeding on invertebrates, and then later forms switched to more diverse diets possibly as a response to competition with birds. And finally for this week is a paper which examines the endocranial cavity of a Triassic sauropodomorph, Buriolestes. The anatomy of this animal helps paleontologists to better understand what the brains of the first sauropodomorphs were like showing that they had an elongated olfactory tract, relatively small pituitary gland, and a well-developed flocculus of the cerebellum. Interestingly, later sauropodomorphs have significantly different brain anatomies, showing that these structures changed massively over the evolution of the group and actually reached the opposite morphology by the Jurassic. The study also provides the first reptile encephalization quotient for a Triassic dinosaur, finding Buriolestes to have an REQ lower than Jurassic theropods, but higher than later sauropodomorphs. This, along with other evidence, shows Buriolestes was an active predator able to track moving prey. So a very interesting study indeed. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. Well, that's it for this week. I do hope you enjoyed 7 Days of Science, and as always, we'll see you on Sunday. <laughs>